renowned endocrinologist, Professor Shutinath Mukhopadhyay. I need to ask you a very simple question. Patient with diabetes and established chronic kidney disease comes to a physician and we have a plethora of drugs uh, available with us. How do you think uh, they should be judiciously used or combined to prevent the progression of chronic kidney disease? Thank you for the question. Talking about the plethora of drugs being available to treat CKD, uh, I think we are referring only to type 2 diabetes here and not type 1, uh, which is treated exclusively with the insulin. Now, beyond glycemic control, the current treatment protocols favor the use of anti-hyperglycemic medications that in addition provide significant renal benefit. Now, if you take that into consideration, uh, then the choice lies between an SGT2 inhibitor, uh, GLP-1 receptor agonist, and, and the combination of the two in certain situations, uh, and this combination has now shown significant additional benefit in terms of the renal outcome. And both these drugs have the advantage of not producing clinically significant hypoglycemia uh, when they are used at all. In combination, there may be some hypos, but uh, they are rarely clinically significant. So you can actually upright the dose, improve the HbA1c, and uh, as far as the GLP-1 receptor agonists are concerned, regardless of renal function, you can continue to use them. Now we have data with dapagliflozin that shows that uh, its renoprotective effect persists even when the EGFR is below 25, uh, so which kind of translates into a recommendation uh, which says that uh, while you do not start to initiate uh, dapagliflozin in someone having an EGFR of less than 25, but those who are already on the medicine, please don't stop the drug uh, when the EG fat declines to 25 or below, because the patient will continue to have significant renal benefits. Thank you.